Hello, and welcome to the second episode of Not More Maths for Dummies. In this episode, I'll be introducing the notion of a complex number. I'll tell you what a complex number is, and how to do some basic operations with them. At school, you are probably told that when you square any number, the result is positive, even if your original number is negative. For example, the square of minus 3 is 9, and the square of minus 12 is 144. You are probably also told that you can't square root a negative number. This follows from the previous statement. If we could, we would have found a number that squares to a negative number, but we've been told that everything squares to some positive number. This is a bit annoying in the context of quadratic equations. Take this example, x squared plus 1 equals 0. Let's try solving it for x. We subtract 1 from both sides to get x squared equals minus 1, and then we square root both sides to get x equals plus or minus the square root of minus 1. However, we've been told that we can't square root a negative number. So how do we advance from here? The answer is simple, we cheat a little bit. We pretend that the square root of minus 1 does exist, and we denote it by the letter i. The first person to do this was an Italian mathematician by the name of Raphael Bombelli in AD 1572. At this time, many mathematicians dismissed this new number as ridiculous, including René Descartes, who referred to i as an imaginary number. At this time, the term was meant to be derogatory, but it's stuck and is still used today, even though i is now just as much an accepted part of mathematics as the numbers we're all familiar with. So, where does i fit on our number line? The answer is, it doesn't. We draw a second line perpendicular to the first, and put i on there. We can now extend this new number line. Above i, we have 2i, then 3i, and so on. In the other direction, we have minus i, minus 2i, and so on. Using the terminology introduced by Descartes, the numbers we're familiar with are known as real numbers, while this new set of numbers are called imaginary numbers. We can now extend this system even further. We can add a real number, say 2, to an imaginary number, say 3i. What we have now is a number that has a real part and an imaginary part. Such a number is known as a complex number. Other examples would be 3 minus i, minus a half plus pi i, and 1. Yes, 1 is a complex number as well. It's equal to 1 plus naught i, so it does have a real part and an imaginary part, but it just so happens that its imaginary part is equal to 0. So, going back to our diagram, where would 2 plus 3i fit? Well, if you work across to 2, and then up to 3i, it fits up here. For 3 minus i, again, we work across to 3 and down to minus i. Basically, the complex numbers occupy this whole region above, below, and including the real number line that we're used to, and so instead of a line, the complex numbers occupy a plane. So, let's do some basic operations with complex numbers. Addition is easy. We just add the real parts and the imaginary parts separately. Take this example. 5 plus 4i plus 3 minus 2i. First, add the real parts. 5 plus 3 equals 8. And then the imaginary parts. 4 minus 2 equals 2. So, the answer here is 8 plus 2i. Subtraction is just the same. You subtract the real parts and the imaginary parts separately. Let's use the same numbers, but subtract instead of adding. 5 plus 4i minus 3 minus 2i. First, subtract the real parts, 5 minus 3 equals 2, and then subtract the imaginary parts, 4 minus minus 2 equals 4 plus 2 equals 6. So our answer is 2 plus 6i. We can also multiply complex numbers without needing to learn anything new. Let's multiply 5 plus 4i and 3 minus 2i, our favourite example from before. We do this using the same method that we would use to expand quadratics, the FOIL technique. First, 5 times 3 equals 15. Outside, 5 times minus 2i equals minus 10i. Inside, 3 times 4i equals 12i. Last, 4i times minus 2i equals minus 8i squared. Now remember that i squared equals minus 1 from our earlier definition of what i is. 
So minus 8 i squared equals minus 8 times minus 1 equals 8. Now, we just collect the real and imaginary parts together. The real part is 15 plus 8, which is 23, and the imaginary part is minus 10i plus 12i, which is 2i. So the answer is 23 plus 2i. What about division? Before we can do any of that, I'll need to tell you what the conjugate of a complex number is. Let's go back to an example of 5 plus 4i for this, and we'll denote this number by the letter z. To find the conjugate of any complex number, all we have to do is change the sign of the imaginary part, so the conjugate of 5 plus 4i will be 5 minus 4i. There are two common notations used to represent a complex conjugate. The first is an asterisk, and the second, which is the one that I'll be using in my videos, is an overbar. One useful property of complex conjugates is that whenever you multiply any complex number by its conjugate, you'll get a real number as the result. I'll demonstrate this using a general complex number, a plus bi, where a and b are whatever real numbers you want them to be. As long as they're real, it doesn't matter what they are, this will still work. Now, to find the conjugate of this number, all we need to do is change the sign of the imaginary part like I just said, that is, a minus bi. Now, when we multiply them, we just need to use the same FOIL trick as before. First, a times a equals a squared. Outside, a times minus bi equals minus a bi. Inside, a times bi equals a bi. Last, bi times minus bi equals minus b squared i squared. Now the minus a b i and plus a b i in the middle just cancel out, so we can get rid of them. Also, since i squared equals minus 1, minus b squared i squared equals minus b squared times minus 1 equals b squared. So, all we're left with now is a squared plus b squared, which is a real number. It's also a formula that's well worth remembering, and I'm going to use it now to do division with complex numbers. Let's find out what 5 plus 4i divided by 3 minus 2i is. It'll require a bit of rough work, so I split the screen into two, so I can do that on the right-hand side in a different colour. The first thing we'll do is try and turn the denominator into a real number, and we can do this by multiplying throughout by its conjugate, that is, 3 plus 2i. Now, this thing on the bottom is just a case of what we were working with before, so we can use the formula that we derived, which was this, if you remember. To work out the denominator, all we do is plug in a equals 3 and b equals 2. And when we do that, we get 3 squared plus 2 squared, which is 9 plus 4, which is 13. So, now that we've dealt with the denominator, we move on to the numerator. We need to do FOIL again. First, 5 times 3 equals 15. Outside, 5 times 2i equals 10i. Inside, 4i times 3 equals 12i. Last, 4i times 2i equals 8i squared equals minus 8. Now, we collect together real and imaginary parts. 15 minus 8 equals 7, and 10i plus 2i equals 22i. So that's the numerator dealt with. We can now rewrite this a little bit to obtain our final answer. 7 thirteenths plus 22 thirteenths of i. We don't actually need to do this last step, though. What we had before meant exactly the same thing, but it was simpler and it looked nicer. So, that's all I'll be covering in this video. There's still quite a bit more that we can do with complex numbers, though, and so I plan to make a second video about them. Once I've done this, I'll link to it here. Until then, though, that's it. I hope you found this video useful and interesting, and have a nice day.